everyone, it's Stephanie Jones. Today I want to give to you guys at home a useful and user-friendly tip on emotional health and spiritual well-being that has been really useful for me. Now I know that for myself and probably for all of you, we have thoughts and feelings and behaviors that we are not happy with and maybe even things that we want to eradicate. Well today I want to talk about an approach to um, transformation that's very popular in the mental health sector right now and happens to be really biblical and that's cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT. Some of you may have heard about this and the concept that drives this way of uh, therapy and this approach to treatment is this idea that thoughts create feelings. You know that you cannot have a feeling or an emotion unless you are having a thought unless neurons are firing and electrical impulses and neural pathways are all on the go in your brain. That's what creates feelings. That's what creates body chemistry. And so really our thoughts drive our feelings. And many times we never put into words what we're thinking when we're feeling something. And as soon as we take that step, it integrates our brains. And so, and then feelings drive behaviors. And the idea is that this goes in a cycle, that then those behaviors, especially if they become chronic or habitual, actually begin to reinforce our thoughts, which then reinforce our feelings and around and around it goes. And the amazing thing about this concept that it's really centers around our thoughts is so biblical. In Proverbs chapter four, Solomon says, watch your thoughts above everything else because out of them spring the issues of life. And of course, Paul says that we need to learn to take our thoughts captive. If you're going to take it captive, you need to, first of all, get that captive in focus. You need to identify where it is and what it's doing to grab a hold of it. And that's what Paul's saying about our thoughts. We need to really grab a hold of our thoughts and make them subject to Jesus. And we know that Paul writes in Romans 12 that we shouldn't be conformed to this world or to our little world, but we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind, which is where our thoughts are. And as we begin to see a change in our thoughts, which I believe for us as Christians comes from listening to God and allowing him to shepherd us onto new neural pathways of righteousness for his name's sake. Isaiah 55 verse eight says, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And I am so glad that we as his sheep can hear his voice. And so when you look at this approach, we begin to say, what am I thinking? God, what should I think instead? And through that process, what we begin to see is a new set of feelings and a new set of behaviors. Now, without God in the picture, cognitive behavioral therapy has something like a 70% success rate. That's based on evidence-based research. But think how much more we can get ahead with God giving us thoughts and not just a therapist suggesting new thoughts to you. I really love this approach and I find it so helpful in my own life. Now, we have something a bit special here, and that is my good friend, Fire Marshal Larry, has agreed to come in and let me work with him to show you how this works for someone as they're using CBT to work through a thought and a feeling in their own life. Well, Larry, thank you so much for coming in today and letting me work with you. So. It would be really good if we started off by you just sharing with me, maybe if you've had any feelings or behaviors that you've been struggling with recently that you'd really like to see change. Well, uh, I'm afraid of fire. Oh, wow, that must be um, a problem because you do work with fire, right? Uh, yeah, I do work with fire from time to time whenever there's an alarm. Right. and. Um, well, how does it fire make you feel then? Well, it makes me feel afraid. That's why I became a fireman. I thought maybe I could just get rid of all fires. Right. So it makes you feel afraid. What other things does it make you feel? Um, well, sometimes um, I start feeling a little warm when I get close to the fire right. and then uh, pretty soon that warmth turns into feels hot. So you're feeling um, 
fearful, you're feeling probably a little anxious, and you're definitely feeling hot. Yeah. So what are you what are you telling yourself when you're feeling those things? I'm saying, Larry, you better run. You better get away from that fire, because that fire's gonna burn you. Oh, right. And then, and what is the behavior that comes out when you're feeling those things and thinking those things? Well, uh, I do tend to run, not literally, but I just try to maybe hang around the back, let other people deal with the fire, because it starts getting hot. Uh, one time, I uh, hid in the bushes. All right, okay. So I can see that you're um, having these negative thoughts about fire that are producing these feelings of fear and the action is that sometimes you're hiding or trying to avoid, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, well Larry, I think this is something I can help you with. Oh, wow. Special thanks to Fire Marshal Larry. I bet you weren't expecting that. So I just wanna finish uh, this little uh, video here today by leading you at home listening to this through a little exercise. So I want you to think for a moment of um, a behavior or a feeling that you've been having in your life recently that you're not happy with. Maybe the feeling is anxiety, maybe the behavior is procrastinating or avoiding things, or maybe even isolating yourself. So just think for a moment, what's that behavior or what's that feeling? And let's imagine that you thought of a behavior and let's imagine that that behavior was isolating yourself or staying away from people. My question would be, what are you feeling when you're doing that behavior? And the feeling might be fear, anxiety. The feeling might be sadness. And then my next question would be, what are you telling yourself when you're feeling that feeling. So maybe if you're sad, you're telling yourself, it's just not worth it. Maybe if you're anxious about being with people, you're telling yourself, nobody likes me. Nobody would even care if I didn't show up. Or maybe you're telling yourself, I don't know what I'll say to people if I go. Maybe I'll make a fool of myself and then people will reject me. Separating out the thoughts you're telling yourself from the feelings and then really identifying the behavior that comes is so helpful. It helps you kind of feel like you have something to be in charge of. You're really taking dominion. And so the next step would be to say, for example, if your thought was people wouldn't care if I wasn't there or people don't really like me, what I would tell you to do is say, okay, Father God, I offer to you today my thought, and my thought is, people don't like me, people don't care if I'm there. And Father, I can see how that thought is making me feel sad. And because I feel sad, I'm avoiding people. And then we would just simply say, Father, we believe that your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So we offer this thought to you, and we ask you to give us something new to think instead. And then we just listen and we wait for our good shepherd to speak to us because he promises that his sheep hear his voice. And so this is where we take time in prayer and meditation and we begin to, begin to replace the thoughts, take captive the thoughts that are causing us negative feelings and negative behaviors. And we offer them to Jesus and listen to his thoughts. And then we meditate on those new thoughts, just like Paul says in his writings to the Philippian church, whatever things are good, whatever things are noble, whatever things are praiseworthy, think about those things and then the God of peace will be with you. Try this at home. It really helps me. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye.